feet four inches clearance on the bottom half, level one only, it says that. So you have to read the sign, bro. The ratio right here. Do cops care about tent in Texas? I don't know, we about to see it. My truck, his truck, 12 wide, 14 wide. Hey, 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 what's up everybody? It's your boy Q, you know who them back, back, back. With another video, I think I for kicking it with your boy Q today. Guys, good morning to you, man, y'all can see. Nice morning now, super cold, here's red, of course, guys. So I wanna make a video today, man, you probably read the title, Day in the Life of Kinda of Living with a Lifted Truck. I got a few things to do today. Going to work is one of them. I do have to go to the doctor today as well, which is always interesting. Parking, the truck here, we'll talk about that. And then third, I do, I am going to watch the game tonight with some friends, so it's kind of a long day. Let's just bring y'all along with me and how owning the lift of truck basically through the city day to day works out. Before we do that, let's, I am gonna give it a cold start. <laughs> I'm laughing because I know my guy, I forget your name, watch the video, he said Q, Cold starting the EcoBoost engine is not good for the engine, bro. It's only meant for, for the EcoBoost, you should be warm starting it, right? Not cold starting with the remote starter. So I'm sorry, bro, it's cold this morning. And just for the purpose of this video, I do want to give it a cold start, so. don't know I am on 37s 24 by 12s also do have uh, some 24 by 14s over here as well here are my 24 by 14s during the winter month right now I'm running the 24 by 12s and then during the show season when things pick back up I'm gonna put 14 wise back on so anyway guys yeah let's go ahead and hop in and talk about our first thing which is MPG and traveling to work okay guys like I said the first thing I do want to talk about is MPG guys so when I first bought my lifted truck I literally lived maybe <laughs> three minutes from where I worked, three to four minutes. Like I literally could walk to work if I wanted to or ride a bicycle, it was super close. Like it wasn't far at all. So when I bought the truck, gas was never an issue for me. I never even thought about MPG. And honestly, to this day, I'm not a really a big MPG guy. To be honest with you, I usually, it's, it's miles per gallon. Uh, for me, what's that, SPG. So I don't really care about MPG. A lot of people want to know MPG on a truck like this and what I get um, as I go through these bumpy roads. I'm about to jump off top. But that's one thing, guys, driving a truck like this, and the GoPro is probably stabilizing it for you all, but driving a car like this, a truck like this, uh, on some of these roads that I'm at, like these nice, small little back roads where I have moved to, it can be a little task. It's can, it, it can be a task. It's not the most comfortable ride. I'll let you know that for sure. You you feel like you're in a freaking lifted truck. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm in a lifted truck. I take it a little slower. Like, look how much space is between me and the cars that are in front of me. They're already turning, but since my truck it's so big and these bumps aren't very pleasant to go through fast. I have to go a lot slower. But back to MPG. Like I said, I was live, I lived five minutes from my job. I didn't really need gas, honestly. And then right after that, two years later, COVID hit. So I wasn't driving the truck anyway. Gas never was an issue. But now we have bought a house and moved a lot further from where I work. Now it takes me about on a bad day, about 55 minutes to get to work. On a good day, about 35 minutes. But MPG, I average anywhere between 13 to 15 MPG, depending on what I'm driving, how much driving I'm doing, and if I'm cruising or, you know, whatever case may be. I usually fill up weekly, and I usually fill up a half tank, guys. I do not let my truck get to E, because that the bill going from E to uh, full is just stupid. And I do run 93, as y'all know, I'm on a 93 performance tune. So it's a little more expensive, but usually monthly, I probably spend about $250, $300 on gas every month and i have the big gallon tank i think i have 36 or i have the biggest gallon tank that ford offered on this truck so i think it's 36 gallons but it may be 34 36 but i think it's 36. so yeah mpg man like i said something to consider but you know you just it's one of those things when you're buying something or doing something you have to consider all cost of that of that purchase and also for me i have the eco boost so it's a little better on gas than let's say a v8 okay guys so as we get ready to get on the interstate here i'll bring me to my second point which is interstate driving guys so if you're fortunate i'm like some of the roads where i stay are pretty pretty smooth i'm just kind of going back to my point i made earlier but sometimes as you travel the roads get pretty bad and here in dallas lately there are a lot of bad roads and there's a lot of construction and things going on so the ride quality on even with the setup even if you can have a pretty good setup you're still going to be reminded what i'm trying to say is uh give y'all a little acceleration right here <laughs> bro this truck still moves out bro like 
For real, for real. Right now with my with my 37, 24 by 12s on, guys, I can go 85, you know, if I need to go quicker than that. I can do it now with no issues. Like, when I had those 24 by 14s on, bro, cruising at like 72, which is my speedometer's a little off, which is probably like 70 or like 69. The truck just didn't, I could not go anywhere with that big setup on there, bro. Like, I just, it just was not good for day-to-day -day driving for me and my needs. And think about that, it's your needs, like what you need your truck for. I know a lot of y'all see Instagram, social media, and y'all see the trucks on the big kits and big wheels and tires. I'm telling you guys, you gotta, you have to build something that is practical for you. Right now, how I have this set up is practical for me. Uh, back to my point, it's just the roads, bro. Just uh, driving, as you see here, it's a little bumpy. You're gonna be reminded that you are in a lifted truck. Like, you're gonna be reminded, regardless of how you set your truck up, it can ride pretty smooth. Like, my truck is smooth, it's spot on. I'm not, there's no shaking in the steering wheel. It's not pulling, uh, like, majorly. It does pull a little bit, but you're still gonna be reminded that you're in a lifted truck. It's not gonna ride, like, stock. For me, right now, this is pretty dang good. I can live with this. Bringing to my point, like being in a lifted truck, bro, people kind of, people kind of treat you like you're in a, like an 18 wheeler. I get cut off quite a bit in my truck, bro. I mean, a pretty good amount of people want to jump in front of me and cut me off. And if you know, these trucks with the weight, added weight and mass of the wheel, wheels and tires and the lift kit and all that, they don't stop on a dime. And so I generally do, let me get out the way because people are flying this morning. I'm going on 85, bro, and people are like literally pushing me on my butt, bro, like to get to work. Like that's how people drive here in Dallas. People do tend to cut me off and I, and I can't stop as, as fast as I would like. I do want to get some power stop brakes. I mentioned that many times because it's definitely going to help. Look at this GMC 2500 um, Denali right here. I really like these trucks, bro. Comment what y'all think. Good looking truck, man. Just sometimes driving in traffic can be a pain with everyone cutting you off. So I usually keep a pretty good distance between me and the car in front of me. And also you have to think about, um, we went to Louisiana for Christmas. And so we were in a rental car and it was it was a little SUV, but super little. And once I got back in my truck here in red, guys, for the first time and drove it, and you don't realize how tall this truck is until you haven't driven it for a while. So for me, when I got back in here, just the height of my truck, you do have to pay attention when you're driving. Like, you can't just zone out and chill. Like, I really have to pay attention to the road. Um, am I, if I'm standing in a lane with my 12 watts, like, am I getting out of my lane because the road is uneven here? So you will kind of bounce back and forth. So it's a little more work. You don't just get to zone out and chill, you know, is what I'm trying to say. It, it's, it's a little more work, for sure. But you can just see the difference as I pass these cars, how much taller um, I am than they are. You can see me here. I'm like, I'm not, I'm fighting the steering wheel a little bit because of the grooves in the road. It's very uneven road actually. So yeah, just a little more work. Okay guys, as I pull into my workplace garage here, I just looked at the entrance of my garage here. It was eight feet two at the entrance, but as you go up here, this clearance shows seven foot eight. So I can luckily where I work, I can fit my truck in the garage. They'll say a lot of y'all ask me, hey, do you fit in the garage? You park in garages at, uh, in Dallas? Most garages here in Dallas, bro, I just, um, I can fit in about 95% of the garages here in Dallas. Usually when I park my truck, I do like to park it up here, like on the outer edges or just away from everybody. Yeah, so that's what we're about to do uh, really quick. And I'm gonna continue my story about the garages. So let me do that. As I was saying, garages most garages here in dallas i can fit in about 95 percent of there have been on several occasions if i can't fit in the garage because of the height of the garage the width of the entry is too small and i can't fit in that way so anyway guys I'm about to go into work and then yeah i'll see y'all when i get off one eternity later Right, guys i'm leaving the office after a day at work y'all want to hear my exhaust from inside the cab bro in this garage this thing sound the turbo sound amazing listen jeez i got a blow off valve on here and i know i don't i don't know if that squeak is either 
That's rubbing. Let's see. <laughs> it's always tough trying to get over right here because of the cars are coming so fast. At the interstate and ramp to get over there is like right there. So you really have to go pretty fast. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in sport mode there. There we go, we in sport. And then we just get a chance to take off a little bit. I actually do like this because I get to go fast for not really no reason, but there's a reason for it, but you know. There you go now. I don't really need to go fast. Uh, truck is coming. Safety left, US 75 North Central Street. <laughs> yes, sir. I look at that truck right there. It has 24 by 12s, Ram, 2500, torn a Kia. I haven't looked at this guy looking at the truck. He like it. <laughs> I think he looking, yeah, he is looking at it. He liked the truck, man. He dig it. Yo, follow me on YouTube, bro. This is everybody here. These lanes are very narrow, and you just gotta make sure you're like, you just gotta make sure you're like in the lane, you know, right there in the real tight, tight construction area, uh, construction areas, you know. So here's a cop coming. Do cops care about tent in Texas? I don't know. We got to see. Here he comes. There he goes. State trooper right next to me. <laughs> He's minding his business. I'm minding mine. Mind you, I got five percent on the sides, basically, and thirty-five percent on the front end. He hasn't looked my way, man. He's going on. So cops don't usually, where I'm at in the DFW area for the most part in Texas, they usually don't bother you. You might get some sometime that might. Since I had my truck tinted, I've never really had issues with cops in my tent. So it's, it's honestly the privilege, I hate to say this, of driving a truck. Because if you in like a sports car, like a especially like a especially a Mopar or Mustang or anything like that, bro. I'm telling you right now, cops, will, they're gonna bug you. They're gonna bother you. Those cars are just magnets to cops. We are pulling up to the doctor's office right here. here here's another point. Sometimes turning into dry ways like this where you got a car coming out and you're coming in, it's kind of tight. So you have to be like real careful, you know, just coming in different places like that, bro. That's, that's one thing for sure. Usually sometimes I have to stop and let people go in by themselves. But this garage right here is eight feet four inches clearance on the bottom half level one only it says that so you have to read the signs bro if i don't get a parking spot down here i usually have to end up walking pretty pretty far oh oh look at this so i just found a spot right here up front right with my truck being so big it's gonna be tight and it's super hard to get in so i have to like really be careful it's gonna be a very tight fit but i can fit so i got lucky because I won't be able to go up. So this is like we're having front parking systems would help and all that. And I'm pretty sure I'm crooked. So let me back up here really quick. Hopefully y'all can see me. This, this is the thing guys about driving a truck this big. I will say it is honestly just parking, bro. Parking, especially places like this. I think I'm in here pretty good. I think for the most part, uh, let me check. Oh no, I'm crooked as heck, bro. <laughs> Let me straighten up. This is the only thing, man. And I should have parked somewhere else, to be honest with you, but I'm gonna have to back up way up just to get this thing in here right, bro. Let's scoot to the left and scoot back to the right. That should be good now. I should be good. It's just pretty tough. Uh, and I'm still freaking crooked. Look at that. <sighs> it's such a hassle. It's such that crooked to me. So I need to come over to the right a little more. Look at that. Anyway, guys, so this is what I'm talking about, bro. You know the crazy thing about it, bro? That's with 12 wives, bro. That's not even with my freaking 14. So my 14s would have made that a lot more complicated than, you know, what it was. But I got in there pretty good, man. A few moments later. I got in here best I could. Yeah, yeah, I got in here pretty good, man. It's just one of those things, bro. You just gotta be a little more cautious when you park, you know, and parking next to people. A few moments later. Wow. I done linked up with my boy, man. Look at that freaking, that, bro, that F-150 is so nasty. I don't know what he doing, though. I don't know if he trying to go straight or forward or what. I thought he had to get gas. Oh, I thought he had to get gas. <clears throat> You know it's hard to be not be in a hole. 
gonna be real with y'all, bro, and uh, take up two spaces. I need to get my backup camera fixed, bro. Like for real talk, man. That's the that's the most annoying thing right now. I will say. Show y'all this joint. Y'all seen the minute time fall? <laughs> Pop out. Wait. Oh, I thought he had that. Oh, go ahead. You good? So I'm film. Look at that. It's my truck, his truck, 12 wide, 14 wides. Y'all can see the difference right there. It's, it's, I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty big difference. I ain't gonna count to you, bro. But um, yeah, y'all seen this truck. Make sure y'all go follow him. Everybody always asks about this truck, bro. Like, it's just perfect city. But once again, I think he had to get another hub replaced, guys, since last time we talked. Go first, you going first? All right. Yes, sir. Sheesh, that boy nasty. He get exhaust on it. That thing is so wide, bro. Look at that joint. Them red wheel lights hit different too, boy. All right, guys, so we actually just valet. We just parked at where we about to be at. Show y'all the scene real quick. Check it out. We just parked. And that's the thing, bro, like, we can't get in the garage, so we got the valet. Uh, valet's not crazy expensive, you know? Like, here's complimentary, actually. We can just tip whatever we want. But actually, my guy over here, he said low. Uh, he actually followed the channel, bro. So, y'all. Oh, yeah, that joint hit, bro. Yeah, exactly. That joint be hidden, hidden. You got it, both of us is yeah, mine. Yeah, I see, I see, I see. All right, cool. All right, all right. He go, he got both of them. So anyway, guys, yo, we about to get ready to go out. Uh, just go watch the game, like I said. I'm gonna wrap the video up low key, man. I ain't gonna even cap to y'all. Yeah, appreciate you watching. I'll catch y'all next. Year. It's your boy Q. I don't know if y'all can see me, but if you do, I'll catch y'all next. Baby, peace.